in four seat 32. In Norfolk. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the wasteful spending of this Liberal government knows no bounds. Yesterday we found out that the Liberals paid out billions of dollars, billions, in COVID payments to people who were ineligible. Rather than accepting their mistake, they imply that the Auditor General cannot be trusted. But it's liberal waste that is causing the cost of living crisis in this country. When will this Prime Minister take the responsibility, stop the inflationary spending so Canadians can put food on their tables and heat their homes? Here, here. The Honourable Minister for that the Auditor General confirmed that the, the emergency measures reached their goals of getting money into the hands of Canadians quickly, of making sure that Canadians could stay home safely and avoiding significant social and economic crisis. Mr. Speaker, the Auditor General also found that it got money to the people who needed it most, yes. low-income workers, um, the most vulnerable populations, and we won't apologize for that. There for the Honourable Member for Haldeman Norfolk. Mr. Speaker, everybody in this House agrees that COVID supports were necessary. We are talking about wasteful spending. This is about the abject failure of this government to manage COVID supports and ensure that the people who needed it received it. Instead, they sent checks to dead people and to people in prison. This government has wasted and mismanaged billions of dollars. Now Canadians are footing the bill with inflation and are worried about how they are going to survive. When will this Liberal government give Canadians a break? Here, here. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, everyone in this House also agreed that we needed to get money to Canadians quickly, Absolutely. that we needed to do it through an attestation-based approach, and that we needed to verify el eligibility at the back end. That's exactly what we're doing, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Mer Member for South Surrey, White Rock. Yesterday, the Auditor General tabled a damning report, finding $32 billion, with a B, dollars of waste. The Liberals borrowed and printed cash so they could give CERB checks to prisoners, non-residents, and paid civil servants. The Minister tried to cover up her incompetence by then bludgeoning the Auditor General on her integrity. Conservatives believe in hope. With the huge increase today in interest rate hikes, when will the Prime Minister stop hurting Canadians and attacking those who tell the truth about their waste? The Honourable Minister for National Revenue, Mr Speaker, I would like to thank the Auditor General and all of her team for the important work with the tabling of the report yesterday. I have a lot of respect for the Auditor General especially for her independence. As we've already said, we appreciate the fact that she confirmed that our COVID benefits were effective and efficient, and we won't let ourselves be distracted, Mr Speaker. Canadians gave us a clear mandate, and we'll continue to be here to support them. And I would ask my colleagues from across the way, Mr Speaker, by the way, to do the right thing and vote for C32 this afternoon. Honourable Deputy, the Honourable Member for South Surrey, White Rock. Mr Speaker, you don't get to pick and choose out of the report. She found waste, waste in the billions. And she and this minister then said that she changed her numbers under pressure from the opposition, yet she called her integrity into question. It's shameful. Meals on Wheels in my community had to close because of high food costs and rising gas prices. Volunteers can't afford to deliver meals. $32 billion of government waste is an insult to those who've been stretching those dimes into dollars. Why should the Auditor General, seniors, workers and the vulnerable pay the price for Liberal waste? The Honourable Minister for Families. Mr. Speaker, the difference between us and the Conservatives is that we start from a place of trust with Canadians. We trust that when Canadians need support, that they can access it. We trust Canadians that when they're in a vulnerable position, that they'll have access to the benefits and the supports that they need. Unlike the Conservatives, Mr. Speaker, we start from a place of trust. That's how we're operating with the Canada Dental Benefit, the Canada Housing Benefit, child care, the doubling of the GST tax credit. When there is need, Mr. Speaker, our government is responding and we're going to keep doing that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Miganti Clérable, Mr Speaker, on this side of the House, we trust the Auditor-General, but the Minister for National Revenue, who is involved 
in the Auditor General's report is casting doubts on her integrity. She said that the Auditor General was pressured by the opposition. It wasn't her fault if she found wastage from the government. This is what she said yesterday. The obligation to uh, audit COVID benefits was in a statute which gave us a deadline to provide the information to the clerk. So who makes decisions on acts? It's the government, Mr Speaker. So why is the, um, why is the minister pressuring the Auditor General in this case? Mr Speaker, our government has made bold and courageous choices. And we've saved people's lives. We've saved the economy by helping Canadians feed themselves and their families under a safe roof. Mr Speaker, it was that or chop, chop, chop from the Conservatives, Mr Speaker. And I have met organisations in the field, Mr Speaker, and every single one tells me, well, th thank God that the Liberals were in power during the crisis. We will continue to be here to work for all Canadians. The Honourable Member from Miganti Clérable. The only thing that we're going to chop, chop, chop are Liberal taxes. That's what we'll chop, chop, chop. The Minister receives questions. She insults MPs on a Gaspé radio. She hasn't apologised. When the Auditor General, an independent parliamentary officer, criticises her work, she casts doubts on the Auditor General's integrity. Let us not even think about her irresponsible reference to the Second World War yesterday. Once again, I would like the Minister to do the only honourable thing. Rise and apologise. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Listen, the only thing that this party across the way is good for is repeating what the, their leader is saying and just saying triple this, triple that, triple that. Perhaps, instead of just singing off the same hymn sheet, perhaps they should talk about real matters, planetary matters, environment, helping Canadians, helping families, helping seniors, protecting the environment. For that, they would actually have to work, and they're incapable of doing so, Mr Speaker. I would ask them to vote for C32, at least today. The Honourable MP for beauport Limoilou. Mr Speaker, just uh, over a year ago, the government awarded a contract to Sinclair Technologies, a company partly owned by China, to secure the RCMP's communications and the privacy of the Prime Minister. This contract grants a Chinese government-owned company access to the RCMP's secret frequencies. This is like asking Dr. No to design James Bond's gadgets. It's so ridiculous and so irresponsible that we just can't believe it's true. Will the government cancel this contract immediately?